I want to say this morning that love, affection is the foundation for marital distinction. Every marriage that will stand the test of time will stand the test of time because there is love inside it. I am not talking about love at first sight. I am talking about a lifetime of love. I am not talking about when you feel like loving. I am talking about the will to love. It is the bedrock, it is the foundation for marriage. When two people that says, I love you, I love you. After some years, they go to court for separation. It means that that thing that sustains the marriage called love died. Your own will not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so from this scripture I just read, I like to bring out five points about what marriage love is all about. It's a foundation for marriage. It's not, I mean, there's no, there is no marriage or relationship that can survive one day without love. What are the things we need to know out of this passage? Five points. I make it very briefly and then I'm true. The first point he said, Husbands, love your wife even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. The first point in marital love is that you must give yourself. Give yourself. Give yourself. Not a part of yourself, but yourself. It is not 50-50, it is 100-100. Give yourself. Your wife is not looking for your money. It's not looking for your name. It's not looking for your fame. It's not looking for your property. It's looking for you. Your husband is not looking for your money. It's not looking for, for the name you have made in the office. It's not looking for, for, for your resources. It's looking for you. Every time you keep back, you go back maritally. When you keep back of your, of your resources, you keep back of your, of, your, of your personality, you keep back your person, you go back as far as marriage distinction is concerned. So you give the whole of yourself. There's nobody, nobody else that has a portion of you. You can love them, you can know people, but your wife and your husband deserves the whole of yourself. It's number one. Give of yourself. Number two, he said that Christ might sanctify and cleanse the church with the washing of the water by the word. You know, he's comparing Christ and the church with a man and his wife. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. It is a man's responsibility to present the kind of wife he wants to himself. It is a woman's responsibility to present the kind of husband she wants to herself. We mean that there is no partner that, that comes into your life perfect. There is no human being, two people married, and there is nothing to change in their life. There is no such relationship. When the person that is becoming your wife enters your life, he will have spots, he would have wrinkles, he would have blemishes, character spots, wrinkles in attitude, and blemishes in various aspects of life. It is your responsibility to, to erase these blemishes by your working on, your, on, on each other to present to yourself what you desire. Is anybody following what I'm saying here today? When you think that you have a perfect person, you end up in frustration. You will be too, you will be too amazed. 
when you get married and you, and you are oh i've gotten a very perfect wife there is no complaint at all she's just a very perfect person i got a very perfect husband i've never seen him frowning i've never seen him angry i've never seen anything wrong with him you are in for a rude awakening rudely awakened to reality when the man displays one character displays one attitude and you'll be amazed but if you bear in your mind that nobody entering your life is entering perfect nobody entering your life is entering spotless entering without wrinkle entering without blemishes then it will help you to begin to make the investments it takes to make the man what it is am i speaking to somebody here today and the man and the, the, the man and the woman should be open to each other never you say why are you always finding fault in me it's not a matter of finding fault he wants to present you to himself the kind of person he wants and the woman too has the right to tell the man the kind of things he wants out of the man's life not in argument not in quarreling not in the way you are eating i don't like it no no not like that it's, it's, it's gentle gentle and treating it is it is by putting in one word or the other and then you present to yourself the kind of wife you want am i speaking here today if in five years time this girl is a headache to you then it is your fault if in 10 years time people are complaining about your wife then there's something wrong you begin to work on it right now my wife the way you talk i don't like it they, I, I don't like the way people quote you i don't like this i don't like that and by the time you begin to do that you present to yourself the kind of wife he wants my wife is here sitting i remember several times she will come especially from the courtship i begin to say i think you need the gift of vision you need a gift of prophecy i think you need this you need that i think you need to be able to pray in tongues up to one hour every morning and i begin to lay hands on her and to put in her life the kind of thing i want to see as my wife and with time those things became made man were made manifest so the, the second thing you need to know about marital love is that nobody enters into your life perfect it is your responsibility to perfect it's your responsibility to cleanse it's your responsibility to purge it's your responsibility to put in what you want praise the lord supposing you have a husband that doesn't want to listen to you you want to you want to tell him the way he wants you want him to behave he doesn't want to listen to you he, he thinks you are finding fault with him i like you to handle it spiritually begin to begin to gather some scriptural materials and begin to prophesy it into his life i have a husband that is gentle he is kind who loves the lord and you begin to prophesy these things into his life and you begin to pray some characters into that man's life or your wife as the case may be and with a little time he becomes exactly the picture you want him to be but don't ever forget this that nothing works out by himself anything that works out must be worked out what you don't work at will never work out so you work at it and you present to yourself the kind of wife you want if your wife is not prayerful work on it until she becomes a prayerful woman if your wife does not study the word of god work on it until she begins to study the word of god it is the same with the man and as you do so i pray that i believe that the lord will help you in the name of jesus christ the third point that i saw in this scripture it says no man ever yet hated himself no man ever yet hated himself the third point in marital love is that you must love your partner like you love yourself love your partner like you love yourself what you can't imagine being said to you don't say it to your partner anything somebody say to you that will pain you don't say it to your partner any behavior that will offend you the same will offend her what you can't do to yourself no man ever yet hated himself no man ever yet hated his, his own body what you can't do to yourself don't do to your partner the kind of way you don't want somebody to talk to you don't talk to your wife like that the kind of way you don't want somebody to talk to you don't talk to your husband like that no man ever yet hated himself the kind of way you would want to be treated treat the other person like that no man ever yet hated himself treat the other person like that i tell you if we do this if you do this if you do this if you do this you will be you will be living together for 10 years 
and you will tell people for the last 10 years me and my wife have never quarreled and people will say it's a lie we have never quarreled they say it's a lie the kind of way what you can't tolerate from people don't release it to your partner if people are talking to you in public don't you hate it and then you expect your wife to be talking to your wife in the public or shouting on your husband in the public and you expect him to be normal no what you want others to do to you do to them that is the law and that is the prophet that's point number four love your partner as you love yourself are you still following me are you following me are you following me my sister number five you must nourish the relationship nourish the word nourish means supply or sustain with food supply or sustain with food supply or sustain with food. when we say nourishment it means you are supplying something or sustaining something with food nourish the relationship what does that mean supply that relationship with your with love love is the food of marriage supply your marriage with love and affection supply your marriage with love and affection a marriage that runs out of love will run out of life i don't know if anybody is following me here today it will run out of life so it is a continuous supply if you don't eat for seven days you are going to begin to grow lean if you don't eat for 40 days you are going to and you don't drink water at all you are going to die are you hearing what i'm saying here so you continue to supply supply nourish it it's a present continuous time nourish it by your speaking honey i love you i love you the way you are dressed you are so smart i am excited in, in, in your dressing by your actions you are by by your actions you, are, you go to the you go to you go somewhere and say oh i traveled to lagos and i just picked, saw this i thought you would like it i, I bought it for you on a continuous basis you are supplying affection in marital relationship the privileges of the marriage you are supplying affection and as you continue to supply you keep the marriage alive somebody say supply so turn to someone and say keep on supplying well for those of you that are single it is in the future it is not today you will supply your own tomorrow but it is good that you learn what i'm talking about divorce is nothing but the bankruptcy of marriage whenever whenever marriage is bankrupt of affection people people divorce so you continue to make deposits of affection and you reap dividends of distinction and when you stop making the deposits the marriage becomes bankrupt there is no deposit of love no deposit of affection and before you know it the bank account of the marriage has run dry and everybody said to your ten to israel go to your father's house me i go to my mother's house it shall not be your portion in the name of jesus That's, there is a need for consistency of supply for for, for one month a man has not told his wife what he feels, feels about the wife for one month a man has not he has not he has not shown any trace of affection at all no trace of relationship you are, you are, you want to kill the marriage you want to kill it your own will not die i say it will not die people that have been married for 50 years when the husband say honey i love you after 50 years say oh thank you they, they are still looking for it because that is what sustains the relationship the affection must be consistent a lot of people get too used to themselves you know men behave like agama lizard once they are running after 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 the little lizard and once they cut the lizard and whatever they want they have taken it they disappear <laughs> face your own i face my own they have we, we have a conqueror's mentality i have conquered you so i can deal with you anyhow it's not and, and when they are looking for the woman they they speak all manner of english they can keep going hundred times. When the sister says, I'm going to pray about it, say, Brother, help me pray. That sister is still delaying me. But once they conquer, wait for me, I'm coming. That is not your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let the supply keep flowing. And you will never run out of distinction. In the name of Jesus. The last but not the least is to cherish it cherish the relationship 
not only nourish it, cherish it. To cherish means to treasure, to treasure. Take, take good care of it, keep it alive. Anything you mismanage, you lose. What you don't value, you can't keep. What you don't value, you can never keep. Whatever you don't value, you can't keep. You don't value your husband, you will lose your husband. You don't value your wife, you will lose your wife. In a married relationship, you cherish it. Don't take each other for granted. Anything you take for granted, for granted is ready to be grounded. Don't take each other for granted. Value, cherish. Let the world respect your husband. Let the world respect your wife. Cherish it. And then it will last long. Cherish it. You are, you, are, you, are, you are somewhere and your wife comes in. Why not stand up for her? A man has been married for 50 years. But every time him and the wife drive somewhere, he will go to the side door of the wife, open the door for her, enter inside, they will lock it before he goes to his other side. Zig Ziglar is the name of the man. He has been married for 50 solid years. And that marriage is still on because he cherishes it. Respect your wife. Respect your husband. That is the only reason why the marriage, marital love will continue forever. I am facing you and talking to you because you are the one getting married today. In the next 15 years, I want to believe the Lord that you will love this girl more than you love her today. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the next 20 years, I want to believe that you will love this young man more than you are loving him today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to keep on moving from this day forward? Cherish one another. Don't slander your wife. Don't, you don't take your husband to, to somebody and say, look at the way he's behaving. You are, you are ruining and killing him. Don't report your wife to your father. Are you hearing me? Cherish it. Cherish the relationship. Accord the relationship respect. Accord the relationship value. Dignify that relationship. And you have a future. The first thing I said is give yourself, give the whole of yourself. Don't, don't keep anything back. Don't keep anything back. Give the whole of yourself. The second thing I said is nobody is, nobody, no partner is perfect. You must invest in your partner to make her to become what you want her to be. And the third thing I said is what? Love your partner as you love yourself. The fourth thing I said is nourish, invest, deposit love into the relationship. And the fifth thing I said is cherish the relationship. Once you do so, you have a future. Can we stand on our feet? You have a future. It is not a matter of how you feel. It is a matter of what you will. It's not a, I, I don't feel like. No, it's, when we talk about love in marriage, feeling doesn't come into place. A man was talking yesterday, just said to Plantis. He said him and his wife will go out and go for, go for, go for dinner. And the wife will... Oh. Polish her face, polish the lips, totally decorate herself. While they are eating, he tells the wife, Please finish on, let's go home on time. When they reach home, the wife goes to the bathroom and changes her dress, comes back to the room with a shower cap. And he said, Up the light, I don't, up the light, I don't want to see you again. This perfect arrangement that she just organized, as soon as they got to me, disorganized it. Cherish, nourish, invest, decorate this girl. You, you, you are a tailor and a fashion designer and a, 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 a cloth seller. Decorate this girl. So that the people will know your handwork. 